Hey guys, this is Rich. I'm doing a short video today showing one way that I fish a bridge. Ever since my boat was sold a few years ago, I've tended to fish bridges a lot, and I fish the bridges a lot for a very, very simple reason. That is that bridges tend to hold fish. This doesn't mean every bridge is holding fish all the time, so I'm going to go through exactly why I decided to fish this specific bridge and then how I ended up fishing it. So, why this particular bridge? Let me get through the details real quick. First, this bridge is just inside and to the north of an inlet in southern New Jersey. I'm going to be fishing the incoming spring tide in August, uh, so the tidal current should be fairly brisk and will be aided by that light southeast wind that I have, and all this will help to push the water under this bridge from right to left in this picture. So you can see it coming this direction. The inlet is about 2,000 yards to the right, uh, and it should have some really good, nice current flowing up and through the bridge. This means the down current side of the bridge will be a perfect ambush spot for predator fish, such as flounder, striper, bluefish, weakfish. The pilings and the footers on the bridge help to create eddies and structure. And as the current that's coming in on the spring tide hits those pilings and footings, the already fast current is going to need to speed up as it passes around those obstructions in the water. This adds a lot of current, it adds oxygen, and it adds forage as the smaller fish and the crustaceans that are, that are trying to hide within that structure end up getting swept around the, the structure and out into the eddies. These spots behind the pilings, they'll often hold the predator fish. So obviously I want to set up north of the bridge, which again is to the left, and cast across and through these eddies looking for where those predator fish are hiding. However, in this case, that's not actually what I plan on doing. So to counter everything I just said, I'm actually going to fish the south side of the jetty. It's for a very simple reason. Despite the fact that the incoming tide and the wind are pushing from right to left, and the eddies are in fact setting up the way that I described on the north side of the bridge, up in this area, they're not actually setting up that way down at the bottom, right down here. What's actually happening is the water is coming through and the current is taking a little bit of a turn here and it ends up coming back down south on this side of the bridge. So I'm actually going to be fishing in here. Now in this area, the depth runs from about 15 feet out as far away from me uh, as I'm going to be fishing, and it gets to about two to three feet right up near the rocks where I'm going to be standing. I'll show you a quick view of that in a minute. Um, so what actually happens here is we have the, the good ambush points up here. It's still a good ambush point in here. However, I'm preferring to get on the back side of these pilings that are in here, and I'm gonna fish these eddies uh, in that area and see if I can pick something up. So let's take a little bit closer look at where I'm going to be fishing. So again, the current is coming up here in the main channel from right to left. It is then curling around behind. And it is a weaker current, but still a current coming from left to right now. And it comes down within this area here. It actually stops right around there. So I'm going to be fishing right in this area here. I'm going to be standing right here, and I'm going to be tossing up into these areas up in here to try to cover the water. Every once in a while, I'll pop one out here. However, uh, I can see a lot of bluefish activity outside there, and that is not my target. I, I picked up a lot earlier in the day, and that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to try to avoid that. I'm going to try to stay inside of the, the eddies and, and try to avoid the bluefish that are out on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be tossing out uh, what I typically would, would toss out for striper or for flounder. Uh, not so much blue fishing, you'll hear why in a second. Um, I'm going to be using jig heads with soft plastics. And it's going to be anything from, uh, I, I would typically use anything from a paddle tail like a slam shady or a, uh, a finesse uh, lure or bucktails topped with gulp swim mullet. Uh, sometimes the naked jig head with the, the gulp will work just fine. And that's what I'm going to be using exclusively within this video. Okay, another view. This is from Google, so you can see exactly where I am. Um, 
I'm going to be standing right down here on this rock here. I'm going to be casting out into this area here. Sometimes I'll put it out a little bit further, uh, but most of the fish are going to actually be hooked right in here. And now onto the video. A little better, not much. That's flounder number two. Another little guy. It's gonna keep it in tight. So this is actually a really good example of why a bridge is such a good place to fish. I'm literally tossing this uh, 15, 20 yards, if that, and picked up two flounder. They're shorts, but they're flounder. Here we go. It's like right at my feet. But the bait is just balling up right here. There we go. See where I caught that? That <laughs> was right in front of me. Another short. Real tiny guy in New Jersey. Oh, that's terrible. That was too far out. I casted that into the bluefish, which is not where I want to be. Nothing wrong with the bluefish, but I've caught over 30 today. Picked up what, three flounder here. And I'm trying for that keeper flounder. Got it in his mouth. There you go. Little guy. Ooh, tiny. Look at that thing. Barely a fish. I hooked him on the outside of his mouth.
Look at that little guy. They're all tiny. Oh, self-release. And there he goes. 